Okay, we are continuing with our type design assignment to go with our spot illustration. So we're gonna find it in our course to get there. And only time for a, a few videos today because of technical issues. Always fighting to get those worked on. But this is assignment six. The first thing we wanna do for assignment six is post our blocking sketch. It can be loose or refined. It's good to have a very clear sense of what text you want and where you want it to go around your image and the size and shape of your finished poster. If it's portrait format, landscape format, if it's shaped, if it's square, and I use the terminology of posters, which is from print, but this is just as common today in digital marketplaces like Netflix search screens, and there it's called key art. So if I look up like Netflix key art, you can see that it is a popular job right now to be a an art designer for key art for these different digital domains. And they are basically digital posters, right? So they're a combination of image, sometimes illustration, and type design. Things like this. So what we're doing is key art design here. First step is to post your blocking sketch. And then I have a refined blocking sketch here, which I needed to kind of show the approach to the president's office to get it approved. But the, as just a raster image, it's kind of useless. I have to be able to turn it into a vector to be really useful. So in my assignment folder, I have started to download some of the resources I need. And the first place to, to do that, if you don't wanna just draw the, the text as its own illustration, is Defont. You wanna find a typeface that's similar to what you wanna use and that you can modify. So from Defont, I downloaded one called Cotton Butter that I thought would be pretty useful. There are many, so you'll find that in the directions this resource to modify existing text resources after you've done your blocking sketch. Go here. And then I'm gonna search for, oh, this is a nice one. This was one I didn't really notice. The awesome possum free for personal use. If I download it, well, before I download it, let me show you. So in the font, if I search for fancy cartoon fonts to support my, my coloring book, I get cotton butter, I get awesome possum, I get lots of them. The brightly crush is very nice. And when I'm actually searching, I can put a preview text in. So I can put in the text I wanna use with capitals and lowercase. And it will show me if they support lowercase as well as capitals. It will show me how they look in the different typefaces. And yeah, I actually do really like this Brightly Crush one or Briley Crush. It's free for personal use. So I'm going to download it. But then I need to modify it in case you know, I want to use it for beyond just my personal use. So it is always important to note the rights. Sometimes they'll say 100% free, but often these are just free for personal use. So it's a, a Creative Commons copyright where you're not allowed to profit from it for commercial work. 
but we're going to learn how to modify these typefaces, not just use them as they are, but use them as a starting place. Okay, since I downloaded it, it goes to my downloads folder. Just like cotton butter did. It's going to come in as what's called a zip file. So I can take that zip file and move it right into my assignment folder. Because typefaces, these are an asset just like when you download images to composite with. And then you double click to unzip it and then it will create sometimes just a single typeface or sometimes a folder with many of these. This is called an OTF. It's an open type format that works. If I double click on that, it will open up the font book, which is Mac's way of organizing typefaces throughout the, the different programs. I install it and it will add it to my library where I've already added cotton butter. Now, sometimes it will show things. So one serious <laughs> error was found. Do not use this font file. So I probably don't want to use it, right? And that can happen because this is just, these are loaded by different designers and users. But I can be inspired by that even if I don't use it. So what am I inspired by? Well, I like the, the highlight it had. So that might be a way I modify something else. Like this bubblegum one, this is shareware. So this is available for everyone to use. So that might be a good one to use. And then I can, of course, just modify it maybe by adding some highlights to it, playing with the shapes, rounding it out. So there's a lot of creativity and personal touches involved in type design. So this is a TTF file. Let's see if it doesn't have any serious errors says one serious error. I'm confused why it's having that problem. So let's see if it's able to load. Because this is one I've loaded before without any problems. So there's bubblegum. You find it. It works. So I think maybe these serious errors are coming from the new operating system. But what's nice is you don't need administrative privileges to add typefaces. This is a pretty low level interaction with the computer system. So I have that one now, I've got this one, and if you see them in your in your font book on a Mac, then I can go to a program, let's say my sketch here for type design in Photoshop, and my Illustrator file they should be available to you as types to use within those programs. This is one of the advantages of not using browser-based software because you can load your own typefaces into these programs. So I'm going to go to my final line art here and just play with designing type to go with it. And I'll show you how you can do that either in Photoshop or in Illustrator, right? So I'm just going to make a new layer. I'm going to lock my blocking sketch layer underneath. And then I'm going to use, for the first time, the type tools. It's a T. It's a T in both Illustrator and in Photoshop, big capital T. And I'm just going to make a little box, just like you would in a Google Slides presentation. And I'm going to use the type tools at the top. So this is Photoshop. And first, I'm going to make it the, the point size, because these are vectors, large enough so I can see it. I'm going to make the color black so I can see it. Black shapes, because white on white doesn't look like much. There we go. It's going to fill it in the new versions of Photoshop. It's going to fill it with what's called Latin text or Roman text. But you're going to type in what you want, which is welcome to the nest. And you can use return for space breaks. You can make it bigger or smaller. I'll play with the point sizes.
So I'm going to do something really basic like that. And just click off of it. I'll show you what's what's different about type files. They are vectors, just like shape layers from exercise two. It will come in on its own layer and it will have a T in the layer preview. That means that it's editable text, which means anytime I can click on the T and it's like a word processor. So there are some things I like about doing this in Photoshop. One is that if you select it all and you hold down option, you can play with the kerning of the text, which is the space between the letters. Kerning. And if you use the default kerning, it's usually going to be a little clunky looking. So type design, if we go to the assignment page, I try to show this. Type design has a lot to do with the kerning, the spacing between the letters, the shapes made in the negative space between letters. So we can customize that in lots of different ways. And one way is in Photoshop using option. If I wanted to decrease the space between the T and the E, I can just select those two, hold down option, and use my arrow keys to adjust the kerning. Kerning's a little more difficult when it's uppercase and lowercase letters rather than just all uh, uppercase. If I wanted to increase the space between the N and the E here, I can select those two, hold down option, use my right arrow key to increase the kerning. But notice it might also affect some of the letters next to it. So if I just select the E, I can adjust the kerning that's after the E. So you'll get used to it by playing with it. So if you select one letter and you use option, you can adjust the kerning around that letter. Okay, now I've adjusted the kerning, but I still have just a default typeface. What about these typefaces I loaded? So I want to look for those. Like bubblegum, which I just loaded, right? And bubblegum doesn't support lowercase. So that can be one option. Then I can duplicate that layer with Command J, turn it off underneath, and I can change it by selecting it. And then the other was Briley Shine or Briley Crush, which also doesn't support lowercase, but I can duplicate it. Then select it again. And then what was the other? It was cotton something. That's why I saved these into my folder. So I can always go back and look. Cotton butter. Now cotton butter does support lowercase and its kerning is all off. So then I might need to go in and adjust it because kerning is built into the font file. To do that again in Photoshop, you hold that option and you use your arrow keys. A really hands-on way to affect kerning is just to put individual spaces between each letter and then adjust them with your point sizes. So there's, there's lots of different methods. And the next thing I can play with, let's say I like this type, but I want to play with the sizes of things. I can adjust individual letters and their point sizes. I can type it in. So I can make this 89 point. Make this... 82 point, and then play with the kerning. Oops. So there are advantages to keeping it as editable type. But we still haven't really modified the type, we're just fine tuning it. So the limits of Photoshop are that we can adjust the kerning, we can adjust what's called the letting,